I guess it's time for uh, episode three of Poetry Palooza. And today we're going to talk about iambic pentameter. We're going to talk about iambic pentameter because today is April the 15th, which is the anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. Now you may think, what does the sinking of the Titanic have to do with iambic pentameter and why am I holding this human heart? <laughs> well, I found it out in the, my driveway and I thought I would use it to demonstrate the miracle of iambic pentameter. Remember this, when a heartbeat beats, it beats in two parts. Every heartbeat has two parts. It's got a lub and a dub. It contracts and it relaxes. Contracts, relax, lub, dub. It contracts, the blood goes out, relaxes, the blood goes in, like that. Lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub. And if it beats five times, it has beat five feet. Every line of iambic pentameter has five feet with one heartbeat per foot. Lub and a dub, a lub and a dub, a stressed and an unstressed syllable. So it goes lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. You may have heard this, uh, you may have heard, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Now we don't beat it exactly like that. The rhythm is play, doing a little dance over top of the very mathematical meter. So come on in here. I want to show you something from this book, The Watch That Ends the Night, Voices from the Titanic. The iceberg actually speaks. And if you look here, you can tell that it speaks in iambic pentameter. Check it out. I am the ice. I have no need of sleep. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Why do the humans crave it as they do? While they and I have a secret tryst to keep, I will not rest. There is no time to lose. Well, in my book, The Watch That Ends the Night, as you go through it towards the end, the iceberg, which is speaking in iambic pentameter, begins to melt. And so, if you go to the very back like this, you'll see that the iceberg is actually melting. And as it melts, so does the line. Listen to this. I am the ice 10,000 years. I am the ice 10,000 years. Look at that. There's only four feet in that line. I've waited for a chance to feel. I've gathered bodies all around. And we call that iambic tetrameter because there's only four feet in each line. But check this out. The fourth line has even less feet. Uh, no sound, no sense of loss. Look, there's three feet in that one. The sun beats down, there's only two. My mighty mass shows less and less. There's four again. And if you look at that stanza, you'll see a chunk has fallen out of that stanza the same time that a chunk of ice has fallen off of the iceberg. So that the large five foot lines of the iceberg's dialogue actually begins to melt along with the stanzas. Now that's pretty cool. And I know you think, well, that's all well and good, but Alan, aren't you gonna go to the library and do something really fun and witty that, re that revolves around the iceberg? Well, you're right, I am. Now I am here quarantined with uh, three of my kids and I thought maybe I would sneak into the living room and I could have some fun with this white sheet and this really gauzy blue fabric and a five foot foam rubber Titanic model puppet. And we together will reenact the sinking of the Titanic. Would you like to join me? Come on, come on, let's do it together. Come towards me while I can go do 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 do. Hey, I went to the library, but there was nobody there because they're all here in the living room. Well, I got my friend Harry. I don't, he's not one of my kids, but I don't know where he came from, but he just like, I found him on the street. And over the in the back, I got my son Doodle and my daughter James, and they're going to help us to sink the Titanic. Let's see what happens. So, we're going to use this 
five foot foam rubber Titanic model. And we're also going to play the part of the iceberg. Doodle's going to do that. Come on, Doodle. All you got to do to be an iceberg is stand with your hands out thusly and take your mama's sheet and throw it over some person. If you have a doodle, that's great. I happen to have one. Now, you can use any person besides a doodle because, uh, you know, sometimes they're not there. Now, here what we're going to do is I'm going to take this five-foot Titanic and I'm going to ram it into Doodle's head. Check it out. As soon as they sight the iceberg, they go to the, the, ice, to the Titanic bell and they clang it three times. It goes three times. Clang, clang, clang. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> but it doesn't laugh faster. Clang, clang, clang. Because he's really upset. And he has 37 seconds before the, uh, the Titanic hits the iceberg. He's going closer and closer, and they try to go around it. But you know what? When you're trying to turn a Titanic, it's different than turning the car. You turn a car, and it's got traction because it's got wheels on the ground. But a Titanic doesn't. So when a ship moves to the left, the entire thing keeps fishtailing, so you've got to do another maneuver. It's called porting. And so here he goes. We're going closer and closer to the iceberg, closer and closer to Doodle's head, and then suddenly, bam, 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 it hits Doodle's head over and over again, bam, 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 and then it sits firm as a church, and then the iceberg floats away. And the Titanic is left Boy sitting on top of the water, and here comes the water. Doodle, water, quick! Just like that. But what's happened that nobody knows about is that the Titanic has hit the iceberg, and it's hit all along this starboard side. Bam, 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 and it's breached all of these airtight compartments so that it fills with water slowly slowly it goes down beneath the waves beneath the waves <laughs> it's not well it's not that wavy <laughs> beneath the lilting waves lower lower it, this thing goes it fills up with water this thing goes and the iceberg and the titanic it actually it can't hold the frame anymore, so it actually breaks like this, and it breaks apart. And this goes down, down into this, into the icy Atlantic, and then it back in, kind of buoys like this, and then it goes boom, 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 and it goes down at the speed of the third class elevator into the inky deeps of the icy Atlantic. And that's how the Titanic sinks. Doodle, James, look at the camera, and always when you do something good in your life, make sure you bow and take uh, advantage and, take, and absorb the applause you receive. Let's give them a round. Give them a round of applause. Yeah! <laughs> awesome. And so we'll see you next time on Poetry for Losers. think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that...